Good morning. This is a very important uh, study today and uh, because we could never cover all the material in four or five minutes. But I want to give you the outline of some future study that I'd like to do with you. But there are three aspects or principles taught in the New Testament that we need to come to understand and to flesh out in our minds and in our spirit about salvation. Those three aspects are position, power, and practice. The first one is my position in Christ. Jesus spoke about it in uh, the Gospel of John when John wrote about what Jesus said in chapter 14, verse 20. He says, At that day, and he's speaking of the day of Pentecost, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And so there's a positional aspect to salvation. Now, understanding that position is foundational for every other aspect of the Christian life to be lived out personally in our experience daily as we walk with God. But verses that uh, are examples are, for instance, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away, behold, all things become new. First John, or First Corinthians 1 Corinthians one thirty. But of him, of God, are ye in Christ Jesus, who hath been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And so all of those aspects of the Christian life come of, from a position of being in Christ. The Apostle Paul wrote about it in Galatians 2.20, which is a theme verse in all of these studies. When he said in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. He is talking about our union with Christ in His death and resurrection, our position in Him. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. There are many other verses I could use about being in Christ. And uh, matter of fact, there's a whole sheet that I put out uh, in my own personal study talking about every aspect of the uh, apostle's life, of the apostle Paul particularly, that he speaks about that position of being in Christ. Everything proceeds out of that position. It's important to study that aspect of the Christian life. And the second part is Christ in us, the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, of course, has come to teach us to bring to remembrance the things that Jesus has taught us. He is uh, one who prays for us. Uh, when we can't pray, he is always praying the perfect will of God for us. He's empowering us. He's enabling us to be what God wants us to be. And he's producing through our life that which, that fruit of the Spirit that is pleasing to God in our life. In Romans chapter 8, uh, the Apostle Paul wrote, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be, that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is none his, none of his. See, it's important for us to understand every believer has God living in him. The person of the Holy Spirit has come to indwell our spirit, to empower us, to reveal the things of God to us, and to enable us to uh, be what God wants us to be. Now, the Bible goes on to say in that same chapter, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And so the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. And so now we're in Christ and Christ is in us. And so the Holy Spirit enables us to do the things that are pleasing to God and produce through our life that which pleases God so that we can live out what the Apostle Paul described as the believer in the kingdom of God, which is, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what God wants us to experience day by day in Christ, in the Spirit. Now, the latter part of that is our responsibility. And most of the New Testament uh, is involved with what God commands us to do. And so before you go doing those things, make sure you lay the foundation first so that the fruit that is born out of your life has eternal value to it that it's the power of God producing through our life that which uh, has eternal value. But uh, 
And the Bible says in, in Philippians, the second chapter, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. There's two aspects of the, these principles of position, power, and practice. Here, you're to work out your own salvation, not work for salvation, but to come to understand the salvation that has been purchased for you as you're being renewed, as you grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ from that position that we have in the Spirit daily, and to put to death the deeds of this body and the old life, enabled by the power of God to do that. Then we grow in holiness, and we have less sin in our life, and those things which defeat us, we have... Uh, we come to understand our power to overcome this flesh and the world and the devil and all those things as we grow in the knowledge of God and our minds are being transformed. The Bible says, Be not conformed to this world's way of thinking, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind as you grow in the knowledge of God. But that working out of your salvation comes into the aspect of that growth process that I'm talking about. We're instantly sanctified in Christ. Instantly, we're made a new creation. But there is progressive sanctification as we grow in our relationship with God and the knowledge of God and the knowledge of the Word of God. As we grow experientially, as we put these principles into practice, as we obey God and His Word and fill our minds with the things of God and heavenly things and not just the things of this earth. Listen, the Christian life is a victorious life. God wants us to live it out and to understand it and know it. And he lives in us to enable us to do that which pleases him. And what a wonderful thing. It's a great thing to know that God accomplishes something through his children. And we see the greatness of his power being manifested in and through our life in loving other people, sharing the message about Jesus in worship and in praise to him and as we understand the deep things of god god has an abundant life for you and i we need to live it out remember know your position understand the power of the holy spirit that lives in you and how he works in our life and then what our responsibility to cooperate with god and be obedient to what he tells us to do enabled by the holy spirit of god well that's the message from the cross today God bless you. Have a great day.